Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand today with a problem around statics. Um, again, a problem of tension in the cord. So we've learned all about the law of signs. I have a full video explaining it there. If you're not familiar with it, you can check it out so you remember it because we're about to apply it and make our lives simple here. Problem statement reads, two cables are tied together at C and are loaded as shown. Knowing that alpha is 30 degrees, determine the tension in cable AC and the tension in cable BC. So once again, we have a problem with two cables. They're tied here on C and they're, they have a load of six kilonewtons pulling to the horizontal. Now, these two guys here are sharing the load, these two tensions here, tension, um, tension CB, and tension AC are sharing the load, or BC to be consistent, CA, sorry, to be consistent, are sharing the load of holding those six kilonewtons in place. If we think about from a force standpoint, we have six kilonewtons there, and then we have the TCA here and the TCB here. And really what's happening is that the component, the X component of this, TCA plus the X component of this TCB are holding six clue newtons. In other words, if we take Newton's law inertia that says that for this to be static in place, both sum of force need to be zero, then that means that six kilonewtons equals the X component CA plus the X component CB. Okay? Now, we can do it like that, or since we're after not the X component, but the real the, um, the real deal, the whole force magnitude of tension CA and CB, then what we can do is apply the law of sines by creating one single triangle that relates all these forces. Okay, And we've done this in the past. There's another problem for you to check out if you want to t train yourself before this problem here, but I'll teach you step-by-step step now. It's going to make your life easy. First off, because there's two forces to deal with one force, then we know this one force is going to be greater than these two forces here. That's the first thing we know, okay? So therefore, what I want to do is I'm going to do this one here a bit longer. Now, what next? The angle, this is 30, right? The angle that is smaller, it's always going to have a um, smaller contribution to holding the thing together. Why? Because because it's um, because of the, the angle here, the angle that it creates is going to have a more, I'm going to put this, dilute force, maybe that's a word I want to use. It's probably a better word. But you can always be sure that the one that with a small, smallest angle will also have the smallest contribution. Okay? And because of that, what you can do is exactly the same idea. You can draw the, um, you can draw the component a bit smaller. So this is going to be the smallest component and this component here is going to be bigger than that one, yet smaller than this one. And once you do that, okay, once you do that, what you can do is create a triangle, force triangle, relating these three components. Again, this is my BC, this is my AC, and this is my 6 over here. So my 6 over here. What I'm going to do is literally just try to place them in a way that I create a triangle. And here's my triangle. So the first step is create this triangle and see what it's going to look like by knowing the length of each of these arrows. That's my triangle there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this triangle a bit bigger so I can start working on it with the information that I know. By the way, what I can do before I do this, let me just undo what I did, is I can bring in the angles with me. I can also bring this with me and put the angles that I have so that I'm not confused when I'm doing this bigger. So what I do is that I have is a 55, and a 55 is right here, 55. The other one I have is this 30, which is right here, 30. And I want to bring this with me so that when I do my own triangle, I'm carrying these angles and I'm not confusing myself. So the first one that we did was move this guy over here. And I move this guy over here, and then therefore we've got to create this triangle here. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna just expand this triangle. Literally, I'm just really gonna redraw it. So we're over here, over here, and then the biggest component over here. This is my six, this is my AC, this is my BC. What do we know? Oh, uh, this is my BC. What do we know? We know this is 30, and we know this is 55. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna find out the angles. If this is 90 here and that's 30, then this here has to be 60. Um, if this here is 55 and this is 90, then this here has to be 180 minus 90 minus 55. Okay, and that is 90 minus 55, which is 35. So this is 30. Sorry, so 35 here. And this guy here will be 180 minus 35 minus 60, right? So 180 minus 35 minus 60, which is 90 minus 5, which is 85. Okay, so now, last but not least, we're going to redraw this one more time. So I'm going to have the big one here. That's my 6 here. And I'm going to have another one here. That's my this one that AC here. And I'm going to have another one here. That is my BC here. And what I have here is the 85. Oops. 85. What I have here is my 60. What I have here is my 35. Note that now it's trivial. Now we just, you know, kind of did the hardest part of the problem. Because law of signs can apply it now. I'm going to have that sine of 60 over AC equals the sine of 85 over 6, which equals the sine of 35 over BC. Okay, so sine of 85 over 6 equals the sine of 60 divided by AC, which equals the sine of 35 divided by BC. And therefore, to finish it off, AC will be 6. AC will be 6 times the sine of 60 divided by the sine of 85, which gives me 5.216. Same unit, code Newtons. And then we're going to do the lazy thing here, which is we'll literally copy this out here. And we're going to say that EC will be this, but then the side of 35. And that gives me 3.455 kilonewtons. And there you go. Those are my two answers. All right, now let's make sure this makes sense. First thing you need to check, um, these, both these, need to be smaller than the main component. So this needs to be smaller than 6, this needs to be smaller than 6, and that is all good, right? So that checks out. Cool, what else? I, um, the one with the smallest angle should be smaller. So um, right now we have that AC is greater than BC. So let's check if that is indeed what we have angle-wise. Here's our Giga. Here's our new original Here's our conclusion. And we're seeing that AC should have a bigger. So AC has 55 and BC has 30. So this again checks out. Okay, so it looks like we did everything right. It looks like we got it. But these, you know, checking these is important to see if it makes sense what you find out, found out. Right? So um, remember that this all is part of our original drawing. BC should be the smallest as is in our drawing. AC should be the second smallest. And 6 should be our biggest. And that all checks out. All right. So I hope this was useful. If it was, consider giving this video a like. If you have any questions, ask per below. Just leave, oh, sorry, um, just leave them below in the comment section. And I will make sure to address them. Um, and we'll talk soon.